This is going to be a short video on understanding the patent office action and patent examination process. And the moral of the video is there's no need to panic. Patent rejections are very common. In fact, it would be strange if we did not get a rejection. So as you might recall from some of our earlier videos, there's several steps to getting a patent. In year one, that's when you spend the most amount of money to actually sit down and pay someone, a patent attorney or patent agent, to write and file the patent application. Once you go through all of that, you're basically in a waiting period, anywhere from you know maybe nine months to two or three years. It really depends on the type of invention. For more simple inventions, I've been seeing uh, this waiting period only about a year, maybe a little bit less. But for some software inventions and more complex things, you're in usually a two to three year waiting period. And of course, there's no costs associated with this waiting period. Typically around year three is when your case will actually be picked up by a patent examiner and they will read through it and they will go through your claims and try to see what other inventions are out there. So they'll search other patents, not just US patents, but European patents and Japanese patents and Chinese patents, and as well as searching uh, the literature. So maybe someone uh, published something very similar to your idea in a magazine or a journal somewhere. And they'll use all of that information to reject your invention. Sometimes those rejections are spot on, and sometimes they're just kind of silly and, and bogus, and the patent examiner is just kind of going through the motions because that's their job, is to put out these uh, rejections and examine the application. So at this point, you typically need to hire your agent or attorney to read through all of those rejections and all of those different references and different patents that the examiner found and put together some sort of response or argument. Hopefully at the end of that process, you'll get what's called a notice of allowance, which means your patent will be allowed. And once your patent is allowed and issued, you have to pay these ongoing maintenance fees of uh, usually a couple thousand dollars. And that's at year three and a half, seven and a half, and eleven and a half years after your patent issues. Now sometimes, or frequently, uh, when we put together our response to the office action, it's not quite enough. The examiner doesn't quite buy our arguments, and so you really, at that point, have kind of a half of a try left. So you kind of get one and a half tries to convince the examiner that your invention should be patented. And if you're not able to do that in that one and a half tries, then you can either give up or you can pay uh, some more money to the patent office and then they'll basically give you another round so you can go through another one and a half tries and you can do that as many times as you want until either you just give up you run out of money or hopefully at some point the the patent office will agree with you and you'll get your patent allowed and so that's why you have such a range of prices from fifteen hundred all the way up to maybe five or six thousand dollars to get through this examination phase as I said before, rejections are very common. So I, in all of the cases I've seen, I'd say at least 95% of them, probably even higher than that, we expect to get one and usually several rejections uh, to our patent application. Remember, this is not personal. The examiner is not saying you have a bad idea or that your, your business strategy is flawed or even that your invention is bad or not patentable. Really, the only thing they're looking at is your claims. So if you remember your patent claims are the, the things that show up at the end of your application that define the scope of your invention. So a rejection means that the patent office is doing their job and we're doing our job. We're trying to get you the broadest possible claims and the patent office is saying, well, wait a minute, I think your claims are a little too broad. They're kind of encompassing things that have already been done before. So maybe if you tighten up your claims, narrow your focus a little bit, then we'll give you a notice of allowance. And without a rejection, we might not be doing our job. We might not be trying hard enough. An example I like to give is selling your house. A house down the street from me, and this is a real example, uh, sold in less than one day. It's kind of a seller's market here. In my, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we got a postcard in their mail from their broker saying, you know, we did it. Congratulations to us. We sold this house in less than a day at the list price. 
And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's great, but if you list a house at 100,000, you sell it at 100,000, and it goes under contract in less than a day, to me, that means you probably could have gotten a little more money for it. And, and you wouldn't really know that unless you maybe started off the, the price at, say, 120 or 110, and then maybe met the potential buyer somewhere in the middle. And that's kind of what we're doing here with our patent. We're maybe asking for a little bit more than we should with our claim scope in the hope that you know the examiner will give it to us. But we know kind of as we're going into this that at some point we might have to scale back a little bit and narrow our claims. And so that's usually why we get our first rejection. Now, just to remind everyone about the claims, you know, typically broader claims or, or more general claims will give you a stronger patent. As you start to really narrow your claims or get things more specific, that usually leads to a weaker patent. So of course our goal is to get the broadest, strongest claims we can, which is why we kind of start off asking for a little, maybe a little bit more than we should in the hope that we can meet somewhere in the middle with the patent examiner. And just as an example, let's say I had a claim that was for a bike that had a frame, had two wheels, handlebars, and a seat. And then I had a second claim that was for a bike with two wheels, handlebars, a seat, a gear shift, a front brake, and a rear brake. So which claim is stronger? And the answer is claim one because this really only has one, two, three, four features, whereas claim two has seven features. So in our example, maybe we'll file our patent with claim one. The patent examiner will go out and do a search and say, wait a minute, someone else has already done a bike that has a frame, two wheels, handlebars, and a seat. But I haven't really seen anyone that has a front brake and a rear brake so if you can amend your claims or change your claims to say it has a front brake and a rear brake in addition to all these things, then maybe we'll allow your patent. And so this video was just a, a short overview of the patent process. In our next video, which I'll try to link in the description, we're going to talk about how, how do you respond to your first office action or how do you respond to your rejection.